In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get more out of Marlin firmware and Octoprint with some great tips that you might not be aware of. Ready printer firmware such as RepRap and especially Clipper get a lot of buzz these days, despite the fact that Marlin firmware resides on 99% of 3D printers. But Marlin, especially when coupled with Octoprint, is still a very powerful combo. And the aim of today's video is to give you some lesser known tips and tricks to help you take them to the next level. Before we start, a video about how to compile Marlin firmware is linked below, as is a video guide to installing Octoprint and a help page on talking to your printer directly via terminal. Onto the tips and tricks, and we're gonna start with the auto start feature. Actually, I lied. We're gonna start with backing up our settings, and to do that, we're gonna use M503. In Pronterface, Octoprint, or whatever terminal program you use, enter M503, and this will output all of the settings currently saved to your printer's EEPROM. Highlight the text, copy, switch to a text editor, and paste it in before saving. Doing this means you won't need to recalculate things like said offset after making firmware changes later on. So on to auto start. And did you know in Marlin, there's a section you can uncomment to run a command as soon as the printer turns on. The example here to energize the Z axis, presumably to stop it from moving. But there's actually an even easier way than that that doesn't require recompiling the firmware. By default, Marlin is configured to read files off the SD card and execute them automatically on startup. The name for this is auto0.g, and it will actually read more than one file, auto1, auto2, all the way up to auto9.g. Here are some reasons you might like to use this, but not all of them will be applicable for every person. For instance, some people might only turn on the machine when they're ready to print, so automatically preheating the better nozzle might be exactly what they want to save time, whereas others might not be interested in this at all. As for the last item listed, configuring for macros and tool changing, we'll be revisiting this later in the video. Here's all we need to do to set it up. Right now I have the SD card from the printer mainboard inserted into my PC, and I'm gonna right click and create a new text file. We're gonna call it auto0.g, and delete the .txt off the end. Say yes to any warnings, and now we can edit this file in a text editor. Now we simply enter a list of commands we want to happen when the printer is booted up. And a nice one to start with if you want to test if this works with your printer is M117 which displays whatever text string we put after it on the LCD screen. We can save the file, eject the SD card, put it in the printer and turn on the power. After the printer boots, hopefully your message will be there and you know that auto0.g is being read. That's a basic example, but in this auto0g file, you can enter any g-code command. For instance, this section of the start g-code in my slicer sets up the parameters for a specific hot end, and I could paste it straight into auto0.g to have these settings loaded when the printer boots, very handy if your firmware was compiled without EEPROM support. And finally, let's say that you wanted to start a print automatically when the printer turns on. All you need to do is to paste that on your SD card and then rename it. You guessed it, auto0.g. This time when the printer boots, we'll see that the print immediately starts by heating the bed. After this, the print continues as if we had started it manually, in my case heating the bed, probing with ABL, heating the nozzle and then commencing printing. It's just an example that you can run any G-code sequence you want, as long as the file is named auto0.g. Even if you don't immediately think this is useful, you're about to see that it integrates very nicely with other features, and next up is macros. We'll briefly start with what is a macro. We could call it a series of commands to be run when a specific command is input, but a better description is that it's a user-defined G-code shortcut. Let's say you're running RGB LEDs and you have a specific color combo that you want on for time lapses. In Marlin, the sequence to set a 15 pin RGB strip with a different color for each LED is 15 lines long. So what if we could store this sequence so a simple short G command executes the whole lot. Macros are supported in RepRap firmware where we have an interface to run them and they're also supported in Clipper where we run them by entering their name. For Marlin, we need to turn them on in the firmware and in configuration advanced.h, we uncomment the line G code underscore macros and then we have a choice on how to set the other two parameters. The first of these is the amount of slots or macros that we can run. In Marlin, the macros are launched by sending M810 
through to M819, which means our maximum available slots is 10. The G-code macro slot size relates to how long the macros can be for each slot and is counted in characters. Let's say we want to run a macro which puts teaching tech on the LCD screen. If we set the macro slot size to 10 and try and enter M117 teaching tech, we can see that it's too big to fit. And as you might expect, the firmware will report an error because the macro is too long. To store this particular macro, we would actually need a slot size of 18. To calculate how long your slot size needs to be, I would recommend opening up a document and planning each macro and all of the commands they entail. Then come to your longest one, highlight it, and count how many characters it is. We can see my longest is 321, so to give myself some breathing space, I designated my slot size as 500. The other thing you'll want to do is increase the max command size for the serial buffer to match the G-code macro slot size. This will stop errors from the long strings being truncated and your macros only being partially executed. After compiling and flashing the firmware, we're ready to store some macros. To store them, we enter our macro and then our series of commands and we have this pipe character to specify a new line. This is where we can return to our planning sheet delete the line break and put a pipe character in its place. We now repeat for our whole sequence of G-code commands, moving everything to a single line with a pipe character in between them. When you're done, your long macro will be a single command. We can copy it and back at the terminal enter the macro number we're gonna store it for. For me, M814, space, and then paste in our long string. We can now run the macro by entering the same command. And if you've done everything right, you will have success. There's one problem here, and that's that Marlin states we can't store these macros to the EEPROM, which means we'll need to re-enter them every time we boot the machine. So it's lucky then that we've already set up auto start, which we can use for this job. Here's my auto start file with my macros pasted in. I have a comment before each one explaining what I'm aiming to achieve. Following that is the storage line. After I've loaded my five macros, I put a message on the LCD screen to say that they're ready. And once the printer boots up and I see that message on the LCD screen, I know that everything is loaded and ready to go. Just quickly, if you're unable to compile your own Marlin firmware, there are two macro plugins on Octoprint. They'll add this functionality, but you won't be able to use them directly from the printer as we're going to with native Marlin macros. Let's now add another layer with custom menu commands. In the back of my Ender 3, I'm running a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint, powered by a buck converter tied to the main printer power supply. So if I switch off the printer, the Pi will get shut down instantly as well, which makes it possible to corrupt the SD card. The correct thing to do is to use the Octoprint interface to shut down the Raspberry Pi, wait a few seconds, and then it's safe to shut down the printer entirely. This is a bit of a pain, especially if you're only shutting down the printer to turn it straight back on for flashing firmware. So what if I told you that we could make a custom menu that allowed you to restart the mainboard for firmware updates or even shut down the Pi from the LCD? The command to reset the mainboard is M997, but it's not compatible with every possible mainboard. You can check the list on the page versus what architecture your mainboard has stated when you're compiling Marlin. We're now going to go to Configuration Advanced and uncomment Custom Menu Main. There's several options underneath this that the descriptions make pretty self-explanatory and you can customize to your liking. We'll then scroll down, enter our description as what we want to see in the menu and enter our command as M997 to reset the main board. I've also uncommented the third line so I get a confirmation and can't accidentally reset the main board when I don't wish to. So that's reset the main board, but what about shutting the Pi from the LCD? That one needs a little more work. The first thing we need to do is to install the Action Commands plugin for Octoprint. Once it's installed, we're going to go to its settings. We'll add an action called Power Off, the type being System, and the command being sudo shutdown now. To give Marlin permission to shut down the Pi, we're going to follow these instructions from a Clipper GitHub issue thread. We're going to log into the Pi using PuTTY or another free SSH client and copy the first line, pasting into PuTTY by right clicking. This will open up a file to edit. So we'll copy the second line from the instructions, come to the end of this file in PuTTY, right click to paste it in, and then Control X followed by Y to save the file. Finally, back in Marlin, my second item I've called Shutdown Pi, and the G code to run is M118, which is intended for Marlin to send commands to a host like Octoprint, followed by A1, action, colon, power off. 
We recompile and flush the firmware and then we can access our custom command to shut down the Pi. After we confirm it, a few seconds later, the Raspberry Pi will shut down magically and we're safe to turn off the whole machine without the risk of corrupting the Pi's SD card. And there's nothing to stop us from running our custom macros from a custom menu. We can see here I've set up two items to be able to switch between hot ends and that references two of the macros I set up earlier. So now when I switch from one hot end and extrude it to another using the exchange system, I can go to the custom command menu and select which one I have to run the appropriate macro and load all of the required settings. That combo is really handy for printers with tool changing, but even more handy if your 3D printer resides nowhere near your computer. The next tip, however, is incredibly simple, but potentially even more useful. We have a problem I'd like to illustrate by starting a job from Octoprint. Everything commences as we would expect, the machine responding and starting the job. But what happens if I try to stop the print from the LCD? Mullen aborts the print, homes, but Octoprint is still sending commands, so it returns right back to where it was, still trying to print. The problem here is that the heaters are turned off and soon the nozzle will clog. We can also have problems with filament runout sensors. Once the outage is detected, we'll be given options to rectify it from the LCD screen. But no such control options exist in Octoprint, which can be limiting. In this instance, I was able to change the filament and successfully complete the print, but in the past, I've had cases where filament ran out and Octoprint kept on sending commands, making the print fail. One solution to this is to use an Octoprint plugin, where we take the wiring from the filament runout sensor and plug it in directly to the GPIO pins of the Pi. We tell Octoprint which pin it's connected to, and now the Raspberry Pi, rather than the main board, detects when the filament has run out and starts the M600 sequence. The main problem here is that the filament runout sensor won't be available if printing from the SD card. So let's make the one change that gets everything working in every single use case. We're gonna leave the filament runout sensor connected to the main board, come to configuration advanced in Marlin and uncomment a single line, host action commands. This will increase the communication between Marlin and Octoprint. So with this firmware change made, let's start that same print again, but this time in Octoprint, scroll down and find that we now have notifications from the printer. Let's test the improvements, firstly by stopping an Octoprint job from the printer's LCD display. We can see like before that it homes, but this time it stays there. And that's because Marlin has sent a notification to Octoprint saying that the print is being aborted, so Octoprint stops sending commands. Let's start the print again and this time trigger the filament runout sensor. The M600 sequence commences, but this time we'll receive a notification in Octoprint that the process has started. Furthermore, any input options that appear on the printer's LCD also appear as input buttons in Octoprint. That means we can control the printer from either Octoprint or the printer's LCD, which means we have full functionality without any compromise. It was in fact commenters who told me about that one in the past, so thank you for the tip. Hopefully there's something here to help you improve your setup. And I reckon I could have made a whole second video with more Octoprint plugins and Marlin features. So if you're interested in that, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.